So in this video, I'm just going to have a look at a wallet that can be used as an alternative to Ledger Live for a variety of different cryptocurrencies. And there might be a bunch of reasons why you find yourself needing to use this alternative. Perhaps uh, you're having issues with Ledger Live for whatever reason. Perhaps you've come from a different wallet platform, hardware wallet platform, and are struggling to find all your coins. What we'll do is I'll just want to show you how, how to go about finding all of these accounts in Electrum because um, if you just click through and follow the defaults, you might find that you can't locate your coins. Because one of the things Electrum will not do for you is scan through and find all the different accounts you have. You'll have to manually create a wallet for each one. And uh, I've created six accounts actually, only four of which are visible in Ledger Live. And uh, that'll be important and I'll mention that again in a sec. So uh, we've got one wallet here, which is a legacy account with the derivation path M4420. That corresponds to that one there. We can see it's got the same balance, 0.23. Likewise, we've got a second legacy account. Uh, so you see 0.43, that corresponds to the derivation path M4421. So you can see that's the same as that M442, but that's gone from zero to one. And then we've got what Ledger calls SegWit wallets, which are here. So we've got a different derivation path for them. So M4920. And then we've got a second one, which is M4921. And the other thing that we've got, which is fun, is we've also got a BECH32 wallet, which has a derivation path of M8420, and another one for M8421. Now, these wallets are not detected by Ledger at this point. Uh, the Ledger Live, as of the latest update, says it has experimental support for native SegWit. Um, however, when I went to add accounts, it, nothing I could do would make it detect these two Litecoin accounts. Uh, and that's going to be an issue for you if you've, say, come from a Trezor or something like that, where you've been, uh, or if you've been using Electrum. Because by default now, when you create wallets in Electrum, it uses these derivation paths. And I'll show you what that looks like. The other thing that I'll add is if you're looking to uh, understand how to get your accounts from the original Ledger Chrome app, uh, into Electrum, uh, what you'll see is if you select Legacy, what you'll end up with is a screen like this. So you can see that account number one corresponds to this one here. Uh, account number two on the Legacy chain corresponds to this one here with the derivation paths in the file names. Whereas if you open the Ledger Chrome app and select SegWit, uh, you know, account, the first account in there is going to correspond to this one here. And you can see there they've got the same balance. And likewise, this recovered account one uh, will correspond to this account here. But again, the legacy Ledger Chrome app did not support uh, the, the new native SegWit format at all. It only supported these old ones. I'll just show you real quick what happens if you start Electrum for the first time. So what you'll get prompted with is this screen here. And so when you say next, uh, if you've got a hardware wallet like a Ledger or a Trezor, you say, I want a standard wallet. We're not going to worry about these other types for the purposes of this video. And what you're going to want to do is select use my hardware device. Um, I know a lot of people will sometimes immediately say, I already have a seed and they'll just type in their 24 word phrase there. Um, but with Electrum, you don't need to do that. It will work directly with your ledger or your trezor and the good thing about that is it will tend to be quite happy to work with your ledger even if your firmware is like horribly out of date uh, whereas ledger live might insist that you do an upgrade first before it will do anything else so we're going to click next and it's detected my ledger it's, you can see it's already initialized all right now this is the bit that is important so you have to choose between three different types of wallet. Now, the one that selects by default, that is native SegWit, is this derivation path right here, and that corresponds to this wallet. Now, it's important to know Ledger Live does not support uh, this address format yet. So if you go creating wallets uh, like using this, they are not going to appear in Ledger Live. Whereas if you create wallets using legacy, that is, we can see that corresponds down to there, this derivation path here, or 
segwit, what Ledger calls segwit. Um, and that's that derivation path there. If you go and open Ledger Live and add Litecoin, it will recover uh, all of these accounts you've created in this way. The only other thing you need to know for this is that if you want to access uh, what would have been represented in Ledger as you know account number two for SegWit addresses, you need to manually increment this number yourself. So if you're trying to add multiple accounts in Electrum, you'll need to add those yourself manually, one account at a time, and you'll need to increase this last number in the derivation path by one each time. And that's what I've done here. So you know this one here was the derivation path that corresponds to M4420. This one next to it was the second account. Let's say I created that back in the day in the old Ledger Chrome Bitcoin app. And then say I had two accounts that were SegWit accounts. And you can see that one there corresponds to that derivation path. This one here, I'd incremented that by one. And then again, these, the same is true for these last two. I'd increment, started with just a, a native SegWit wallet and then incremented it by one for this last wallet. But it's important to know that, uh, again, in Ledger Live, these first four wallets would all have been detected automatically by Ledger and just sort of added in. So Legacy 1, Legacy 2, SegWit 1, SegWit 2. Um, but yeah, these last two ones will not appear at all. And so if you're trying to find a sort of like missing Litecoin, if you found some but not all, uh, my suggestion would be to create, say, half a dozen accounts in each of these first two types if you're coming from Ledger. So start at zero and go all the way up to five. And I think you'll find uh, all of the accounts that you'd used there. Obviously, if you've created dozens and dozens of accounts, you'll have to create lots and lots of wallets in Electrum, and that could be very onerous. Um, but you know, if you're in a situation where you're stuck and for whatever reason uh, you can't or don't want to use Ledger, then this is a way to access your coin. And again, this will work for any cryptocurrency that's supported by Electrum. So Bitcoin, Litecoin, Vertcoin, things like that. Uh, you can use them instead of Ledger Live. You'll still need to use Ledger Live to install the Litecoin app on your Ledger Nano. Uh, and you need to have that app open. Uh, but in terms of interacting with your accounts, um, you can just use Electrum and that'll work perfectly. So you've got Electrum, which is a Bitcoin client. Uh, there's also a fork that is a Litecoin client. And I'll actually be using Electrum LTC today just because it was faster to work with the funds for the purposes of this video. Um, you've got the Vertcoin fork of it, Electrum VTC, uh, even Ravencoin, you know, some smaller uh, tokens. You've got Electron Cash, which is the Bitcoin Cash fork of it, and uh, you've got a Bitcoin Gold one as well. So Electrum is something that uh, has been forked to support many, many, many currencies and is very commonly used. Uh, it's great because it will work directly with your hardware wallet as well. I think the only other warning that's worth saying is that uh, Electrum, because of its popularity, has often been the target of uh, sort of uh, various attacks and ways to try and either create botnets or to steal people's cryptocurrency. Um, so it's really important that you make sure that what you're downloading is actually from the official uh, website, the official repository, and not a compromised version. Uh, there have also been forks of uh, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies that have been deliberately designed to sort of pinch your keys and to steal the currency that they're supposed to be forking from, and I'll do a whole video on that another time. So uh, just be aware that uh, you need to, again, be vigilant in where you source your Electrum software from and make sure it's from the official um, websites. And I'll, I'll put the websites for the ones I've listed in here in the description as well. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Just hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make to help people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. Or if there's a question you'd like some more information about or a topic you'd like me to cover in the future, just leave a reply.